your self-image, the way you see yourself, the idea of who you are, who you think you are, determines how people respond to you, what you attract into your reality, much more than your thoughts, feelings, and actions. So, behind your thoughts, feelings, and actions, there's a self-image that determines all of your feelings, thoughts, and actions. So, if you want to change what you experience, if you want to change your reality, start by changing yourself, not the external world, but your identity, the way you see yourself, and then the way you express yourself. Before you can change your self-image, before you can change your identity, you'd have to acknowledge who you are being at the moment. And that's where authenticity comes in. So, if you can first be authentically who you are, as you are, if you can match your current vibe one-to-one -one without evasion, without denial, without having to protect yourself, if you can confess and admit this is the way I'm being, this is the way I feel, this is the way I am, something interesting happens when you're that authentic. The negative self-image that you're admitting to, that you're being with, begins to dissolve and disappear. Why? Because you're no longer pushing it down into your subconscious. You're no longer afraid of your shadow. You're standing there and you're confessing and admitting to your shadow. You're creating a frequency match. So, let's for example say you're afraid of being boring or somebody says to you, you know what, you're pretty boring. And if that strikes a chord in you, if you feel hurt by that, it means there's some truth to it. It means that you're suppressing a part of that. And that's why it's being reflected in the outside. So whatever's being reflected in the outside, you are suppressing within. So if you see boring people everywhere, it's because you yourself are rather boring. So when that happens, you're, it's best to just be authentic. And then I could say, well, it's been said to me before, this specific uh, thing, it's been said to me that I am boring. And so I stand there and say, yes, I am a rather boring person, a tedious, totally uninteresting. And you see, as I make no attempt whatsoever to mask it, or hide it, or put on a ruse or ploy, or justify it, or defend myself, no energy is wasted, nothing is suppressed into the subconscious. So I just stay with, yes, I am boring. I admit it, I confess. I can be quite boring at times. My voice can be quite monotonous. I am boring. So very, very, very boring. And what happens when you admit to your shadow side, when you're just with it, without any evasion whatsoever, 100% matching that, it starts to disappear. And you get a surplus of energy. Instead of feeling more tired, you feel more awake, because there's nothing being suppressed. It's a wonderful tactic as well, when somebody's criticizing you, to simply accept it and take it as it comes. Because whatever comes from the external must have something to do with you. That is the reality creation paradigm. So you take responsibility for that and you match it. And once you own that, 
once you can fully be with that, in this example, boring, you're in a space where you can change it. You see, you can't change a reality you don't even acknowledge. If you do not acknowledge what is, just as it is, 100%, a 100% copy of what is, uh, you can't change reality. I know this is contrary to what uh, positive thinking teaches. They teach you should ignore the negative and go straight for the positive. Well, it's not what I teach. Uh, because that doesn't work as well. Pushing stuff down and ignoring what is there doesn't work well. Uh, if you only go to the positive self-image without handling the self-image you already have, it's just going to be like a mask that everybody can see through. So once I've acknowledged that, yes, I'm in fact very, very boring, um, I can ask myself, who would I like to be? What should my new self-image be? Hmm, instead of boring, I'd like to be somewhat entertaining, somewhat lighthearted, and somewhat playful. So I create this new self-image in my head of somebody playful. And if I can't imagine that, some people don't have that strong of an imagination, then they just take somebody they admire. So if I want to be playful, I'd have to think of somebody else that is playful. And as I hold them in mind, my self-image, mix it with my self-image, my state already changes. Now, I'd have to practice that new rule. I'd have to hold it in mind many, many, many times on different occasions, in different situations, and I'd have to l learn to respond as that new identity, respond as that new role. So, how would this new role respond to that? And how would this new role respond to this? And how would this new role respond to crisis? And um, anything positive or negative helps you to grow that role. That's how this works. So if there's a crisis, I can ask myself, how would my higher version respond to this? How would the humorous, playful guy respond to this? Versus how would the boring guy respond to this? Um, which are two very different responses. So step one is to be authentically who you are, as you are and simply confess and admit with zero resistance, with no energy wasted. And the second step would be to change your self-image to something else, which uh, is solely created by you, fully created by imagination. You see, when people out there become experts in their field or celebrities or whatever, that's all imagination. It's illusion. It starts in their head and they imagine themselves to be some expert or some celebrity and that's what they become. Or they admire certain experts and they become like them. You do become what you admire. You become what you hold in your mind. So you first have to find out what you're already holding in mind subconsciously. Acknowledge that. Bring that up. Be with it. And that could take anything from five minutes or 60 seconds to several days or even months until it is fully acknowledged that you are indeed being that and being seen as that by others as well. So, um, right, the new self-image is then practiced and trained. So right now, I'm feeling rather normal. That is what I'm being. That is my authentic being right now. There's a voice in my head that for these videos, I'm supposed to be excited and passionate at all times, and I'm a coach, blah, 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 blah. But authentically, if I'm authentic, I'm just feeling normal. So I'm going to be with normal for a minute. Okay, I'm just quite normal. This is me being normal. Hello world, I am normal today. I'm neither up nor down, I'm just normal. So what I'm trying to do is occupy, deliberately occupy the role 
that I'm subconsciously already playing anyway. So it's no longer a subconscious role. It is now a conscious role because I'm consciously being normal. Let's see if I can be even more normal. How to be normal. It's quite difficult to be normal. Okay, and as I stand and breathe with that and confess to that, as I'm authentically what I am, which is normal, um, I can feel an increase in liveliness, an increase in energy, so that I'm no longer feeling quite that normal. I'm feeling a little bit more lively right now, a little bit lighter. Now I'm feeling normal and a little bit lighter. Normal light. I am normal light. You see, as that is fully owned and let go of, um, you ascend to the next higher uh, state or self-image. Now I could ask myself how I would like to be uh, for the remainder of this video. Close my eyes and bring up some self-image. Let's take my higher self, or myself in 10 years. Who would I like to be in 10 years? Mmm, okay, beautiful. All right. So that self in 10 years is quite calm. And by just bringing it to mind right now, I do feel calmer. You see, and you can do this with everything. So if you are afraid of uh, being a hater, for example, hating people, resenting people. Um, most people, they, they suppress their hate. They're ashamed to be with that, ashamed to admit how much hatred their shadows have, how much hatred they harbor. So they'd rather suppress it than to admit it and be with it and say, yeah, well, I just be honest, I just hate people. I hate them. I absolutely hate them. And that's why there's so much hate in the world, because it's not allowed. It's suppressed. Paradoxically, you'd think that if you uh, allow it, let it come up and be with that, that would increase the hate, but it doesn't. It decreases it because it's brought to conscious light, and you see the absurdity of hatred which is only a projection. However, if you do not allow yourself to be a hater or a liar or a thief and all those other shadow identities that people walk around with, then you're going to um, project it. You suppress it and to compensate, the subconscious projects that everywhere else so that you walk around and you see liars and thieves and haters everywhere else. They are the haters. They are the liars. They are the thieves. So if you find somebody talking about how terrible um, politicians are, and they talk like that every single day, I'm not saying politicians aren't terrible. They are mostly. But um, if, if somebody's preoccupied with uh, you know, looking for how evil and terrible politicians are, they are projecting. They are hiding something within themselves, and so that they don't have to bring that up and face that within themselves. That evil, they um, see it everywhere else. Now, if you've integrated your evil side, so to speak, you lose interest in looking for evil everywhere out there, and you start uh, spending your life in more productive, creative constructive ways. So, whatever it is you're most afraid of, if there's something you say mustn't ever come to light, something that has to be kept down, you have to keep the lid on it, mustn't come to light ever, nobody should ever find that out about me, that is exactly where to go. That is exactly what to bring up, to integrate, to free yourself from that. So what is something 
nobody must ever know about you. It's time to stop suppressing that and feel that. And it might be a temporary pain, but as I always like to say, it's temporary pain for a long-term gain. And notice the self-image behind that feeling. How do you see yourself? What is your what is one of the what are one of the negative images you have of yourself? And simply take some time to be with that, to confess to that. I am a a what? A loser, a failure, a liar, a hater, stupid, boring, ugly. Allow yourself to be completely naked inside, with nothing to protect. No more energy wasted trying to protect yourself. No more energy wasted trying to gain somebody's approval. And tell them, yeah, well, I am in fact uh, a boring person. That's true. And by doing so, you, you show that you no longer, you're no longer dependent on their applause, which is a huge waste of energy. Needing people's attention and appreciation and approval. Do you appreciate me? Do I look good? What am I looking like? Does he like me? Huge waste of energy. Simply be authentic and stop wasting your energy. Stop seeking approval. Stop trying to avoid disapproval. And simply be what you are as you are. Then you can change it. And the second question is, who would you like to be instead? What is an identity you would prefer? Who would you have to be to create and attract what you like? You can close your eyes on this and simply imagine who you'd like to be or who you'd have to be to create or attract a certain reality. Who would you have to be to attract success? And what does being that entail? What kind of uh, actions and behaviors? What kind of speech patterns? What kind of clothing? What kind of mannerisms? What intonation does such a person have? What does such a person look like? So I'm sure you're getting the hang of this and understanding the importance of uh, being authentic before you change. First, acknowledging and accepting reality as it is before you can change it. Because if you don't know what reality is, you're not going to be changing it. You're just going to be putting a positive mask over a negative mask and everybody's going to see through that. It's going to be embarrassing instead of empowering. So the fake it till you make it approach or the acting as if approach is only powerful if it's authentic. If you authentically believe and feel it. Acting as if or fake it till you make it is embarrassing if you don't really believe it and if you're using that to suppress uh, hidden masks, hidden identities. I trust this presentation was somewhat helpful to you. If so, recommend it far and wide. My name is Frederick Dotson of www.realitycreation.org.